Hey there, future scientists. Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a substance that is a metal chloride. It's a type of salt that has some metal ions paired with some chloride ions. And those are going to be in some specific ratio. Sometimes metal and chloride are paired in a one-to-one -one ratio. Sometimes they're paired in one-to-two, one-to-three, etc. But we're going to see a general procedure about how to create one using magnesium chloride, and then how to analyze the results to actually understand what it is that we created, whether it's MgCl, MgCl2, MgCl3, etc. It's a pretty straightforward procedure, and though you probably won't be doing this exactly with magnesium in lab, there are some minor adjustments that need to be made in your substances to make sure you get good results. So without further ado, up and at them. So this is a fairly straightforward procedure and can be used for many different types of metals, not just magnesium. Could be iron, could be manganese, could be nickel. Now first you need to label your beaker and your test tube with your initials or some identifying information. These things are not terribly consistent in their mass between them, and so you'll want to make sure that you are measuring the same ones all the time. Once you've labeled your dry and clean glassware, you'll want to measure its mass. It's important that the test tube is both clean and dry. While the beaker might be a little bit dirty, it does need to be dry. Next, you're going to add to the test tube about 0.1 to 0.3 grams of magnesium. And it's important that even though those are approximate amounts that you get the exact mass as precise as you can. Next, you're going to be adding 15 milliliters of acid to react with the metal. That's the source of your chloride ion. And depending on the metal you'll use, you'll either have a more or less concentrated acid. You should not be using different amounts. The reason that we're only using 15 milliliters is so that when it evaporates in the drying oven later, it won't splatter out of the test tube. So we want to keep that level low. For magnesium, you're going to use 15 milliliters of three molar hydrochloric acid. For something like manganese, you would use the same amount, 15 milliliters, but a more concentrated acid, something like 6 molar or 6M. Once it's done reacting, you're going to take your test tube and you're going to put it into a larger beaker with other people's test tubes so that they can all fit into the drying oven. You're going to wait overnight while the drying oven does its thing and evaporates the excess acid that didn't react and water. You'll then take out your sample put it back into your beaker that you originally measured it with and take a final measurement of the mass. All right, so that's the procedure. We'll look at the calculations next. Now, unlike for most labs that we do here where we have you use Logger Pro to analyze your data, we're going to show you how to analyze your data today using Google Sheets. Part of that reason is so that you can analyze large amounts of data. You're going to analyze the entire class's data, not just your own. And you're more likely to encounter and work with Google Sheets after high school than you would be Logger Pro. What's always good is to start off with a reference section using some constants that we're going to be applying for the calculations. Now, because you might be using a different metal, it'll be important to state in the reference section which metal you are using. I'm using magnesium for this experiment. Next will be the molar mass of the metal. And because it's a single atom of this metal, you're going to use the atomic mass from the periodic table. For magnesium, it's 24.3. If you are using a different metal from magnesium, it would be something different from the periodic table for that metal. Now, oftentimes students will ask how many decimal places they should use, and I would say at least however many your measurements have. 
you don't want your number of significant figures in your calculations to be limited because of rounding when you're pulling numbers from a reference. Because I know that my measurements and calculations are going to need at least three significant figures, I want to have at least three significant figures in the reference that I'm using. 24.3 would have been acceptable, but there's also no harm in using more. And because this activity is all about making a metal chloride, everyone is going to use the same mass of chlorine, which is going to be, again, from the periodic table. It helps when using a spreadsheet to not include units in the cells where the numbers are being placed because then it comes in as text and it won't be able to work well in calculations. These are the only pieces of reference information I'm going to use, so I'm going to make sure to put them in a box. Now I'm going to make columns for the measurements that were taken in the lab. And these are going to be columns where you're going to paste in not just your own data for the first row, but the data for your classmates or other groups so that you can analyze the entire data set. And because these were the measured pieces of data, I have merged the cells above them and put the header that they are the data. I'm going to put in my values from my experiment. This was the mass of the empty glassware, the test tube, and the beaker. This is after I have put some metal into the test tube. And this is from the second day after removing the test tube from the drying oven, putting it back into my original beaker and measuring it after it is reacted. You can see because I typed it in zero, which was significant because it was measured on a balance, it ended up being cut off automatically by Google Sheets. To make sure that that is going to stay, I'm going to increase the decimal places. So you're going to want to make sure, because these were all measured with the analytical balance, that they all have three decimal places and are formatted as such. Next we'll look at calculations. First we're going to calculate the mass of the metal. calculate the mass of the metal is going to be the difference between the glassware with the metal and just the glassware. Difference means that it's going to be a subtraction, and to get that going it's going to start off with an equal sign so that this will calculate it for you, and you would select the cell you want to start with, and then hit the minus sign and select the cell that you want to subtract from it, and then you hit enter. It is giving me the correct significant figures now, but if I needed to adjust them, I would use these keys up here. Next, I'll find the mass of the chlorine that got added. And to find the mass of the chlorine that was added, it's going to be the difference between the glassware with the metal chloride and the glassware with just the metal. The difference between these is the chlorine that was added to the product. Now right now these were both general references, which means that if I were to hit Control C to copy this formula, and then move to the row below it and hit Control V, notice that it was calculated here using D7 and C7, D7 and C7. But when I pasted it here, it is actually referring to the cells D8 and C8. And so because this was really referring to cells within the same row, the program knew that I also wanted to refer to cells within this row if I'm pasting it into this row. So those are general references. So that when you paste, those are going to change based on the row if you've moved down or the column if you've moved to the right. What this will allow you to do is paste in this formula all the way down so that when you paste in class data here, the calculations will be done automatically. Now we're going to calculate moles of metal. To calculate moles of metal, it is the 
mass of the metal divided by the molar mass of the metal. That's a ratio of the mass of the metal to its molar mass will tell us the moles of the metal. Now because the molar mass of the metal was a reference amount, we're going to need to use a specific reference instead of a general reference when talking about this because we don't want each time we paste the same formula down, we don't want that reference to also move down. We want a general reference first because we want it to be mass of metal within the same row, but what we're going to divide by is going to be this specific cell B3 or whatever you have put your molar mass of the metal into if it's a different cell. And the way to do a specific reference is to use the dollar sign in front of each character. So what that means is that if I copy this formula and paste it below, so notice it says G7 and B3, notice what is pasted below is G8, so that changed because I moved down one row, but B3 stayed the same since I used those dollar signs for a specific reference. I'm referencing a specific cell, not a general placement of a cell in relation to this one. This is too many significant figures, and so I've got to adjust it by decreasing the decimal places, and it should be three based on the mass of the metal. Next will be moles of chlorine. Similarly, it's going to be the mass of the chlorine divided by the molar mass using the specific reference again. The general reference here, and then the specific reference for the molar mass of chlorine and adjusting for sig figs. Next, it'll be the ratio of moles of chlorine to moles of the metal. That's what we're trying to figure out for its formula. This is going to be a general reference since we want it to change depending on the row that this is pasted into. And we'll adjust for sig figs. last, we'll look at the percent error. The accepted ratio is 2. It should be MgCl2 for magnesium chloride, and so the accepted ratio is that there should be 2 moles of chlorine per 1 mole of magnesium. I'm going to add that to my reference. So now I can use that ratio here that it is supposed to be 2 in my equation. The percent error is the difference between the observed and the accepted divided by the accepted. So to start off having the difference and these are going to be a general reference but then a specific reference. And then we need to divide by the specific reference here. Because this is a percent error, we need to next multiply by 100. And I'll adjust for significant figures. The significant figures here, when you show your work on paper, is going to be obvious why it should be 2 in this case. So I got 14% error, which means that I was over the ratio of 2.0, the accepted ratio. What that tells me is that my moles of chlorine were too high, which means that my mass of chlorine was too high, which means that what I was calling mass of chlorine was really something else in there, most likely water, that this didn't get dried out all of the way. That's typical of salts, especially when they are created in water. I only let this dry for one night, and so I would expect that it didn't get completely dry. To fix this source of error, I could have either turned the drying oven up. It was already at 200 Celsius, so that's pretty high. I wouldn't have wanted to go much higher, so the other idea would have been to just leave it in longer and see if the mass of chlorine would go down, which would bring down the moles of chlorine, which would bring down the ratio. If you end up with a number that's lower than 2, 
what that's telling you is that the mass of chlorine was too low or the mass of the metal was too high, which means that there was probably some contamination or the metal was already partly reacted. With the ratio being too high, that's typically because there is still water in your product. Last, I'm going to format everything nicely. So I'm going to merge all of the cells here. And I'm going to center this, make it bold. These borders here that you would use, you would maybe put them after you put in all of your class data so you know how many rows to go down. You also could move everything over a couple of places so that it will print well, or change the spacing on a few of the cells so that it would print well if you were deciding to print this or paste it into a document. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully that's helped you understand what you need to do in terms of hands-on activities and how you'll analyze your data. Just keep in mind that if you are not using magnesium for your metal, and you're instead using other things, you're going to adjust the amount of acid and you're going to adjust the calculations using the molar mass of your metal rather than magnesium. If you have any questions, feel free to ask your instructor. Good luck on this. Toodles.